Welcome back to Wadcast, guys. Hope you're doing well out there. I'm your host, Wad, as always. And in this video, we're going to be doing an update to the longest case that I covered on my channel, and that was the prosecution, the arrest, prosecution, conviction, and sentencing, and now appeal of Ghislaine Maxwell. I did updates on this case for like two years straight from 2020 all the way to 2020 the end of 2022 and also last year i covered her uh, appeal as well and now we're covering her losing her appeal and that is the latest update which is that she has she went to the second circuit court of appeals her lawyers filed her appeal of her conviction where she was sentenced to 20 years she had a variety of legal arguments on the merit and they have all been denied by the court as i predicted so um, this was a, a very, in my opinion, a very easy prediction. Most of the legal arguments that they were making, they have they had been making these arguments since pretrial proceedings back in 2020 and 2021. So I'm going to show you a video here from three years ago. Uh, one of the first times that they were denied on these grounds, I covered it. And Judge Allison Nathan was the trial judge here. And she denied these ridiculous arguments to try to dismiss the indictment. And they used the same arguments to try to overturn the conviction after she was convicted uh, and sentenced to uh, 20 years in prison. Okay. So I'm going to, we're going to be going briefly through the decision of the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. She lost on all grounds. There's not much to cover, but I'm going to show you guys some receipts on what I said would happen. And that's exactly what's happened. So, so there's some things that are up for discretion. Some legal arguments are uh, shifty, right? Depending on the case, the appeals courts might settle one way or the other. And there was one argument here regarding the jury note um, that was iffy, although she lost on that as well. So that was the only one where I said, maybe she might get a sentencing reduction. Likely not, but maybe. There was some opening there, but no, the appeals court denied all the arguments that the Gill and Maxwell side made. This was the decision by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. That's the Court of Appeals for New York. After you, after they, they had a trial in uh, Judge Allison's court, that's a court in the Southern District of New York. Uh, after you lose in a trial court in New York, you uh, in a federal uh, trial court, you can appeal up to the Federal Appeals Court, which is the Second Circuit. The Second Circuit covers New York. Gill and Maxwell is the defendant. U.S. versus Maxwell was the case. Appeal from the uh, district court from the Southern District of New York. She was she stood trial. And she was convicted of multiple counts, 18 U.S. Code Section 371, that's conspiracy, 18 U.S. Code Section 2423A, and uh, 18 U.S. Code Section 1591A and B2. Okay, so these had to do with convicted. She was convicted of conspiracy to transport minors with intent to engage in criminal sexual activity in violation of this section, transportation of minors with intent to engage in criminal sexual activity in violation of this section, sex trafficking of a minor in violation of these two sections. Actions. And then she was sentenced um, on all the charges. Uh, or altogether, she was sentenced to 20 years. Okay, that's the uh, takeaway there. So the first argument is the first argument that they made like back in 2020, they were arguing this. And I told you in back then that they would lose. And finally, the appeals courts have over uh, have uh, ruled against it. OK, and th then this argument is the idea that Jeffrey Epstein's non-prosecution agreement from Florida shield Ghislaine Maxwell from prosecution. Okay, and I'm going to show you my video where I told you guys why this is not true. The trial judge said that it's not true. That's not true. That 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 deal does not apply to Ghislaine Maxwell. That was in Florida a long time ago. This NPA argument is the oldest argument they've been trying to make. And they made it at trial. They lost. They made it in pretrial proceedings before the trial. They lost. They made it in post-trial motions. They lost. Now they lost at the appeals court as well. Okay, so we give lots of chances. Our legal system does for people to make arguments multiple times and to be reviewed multiple times by the trial court and by the appeals court. And if you want to try to go to the Supreme Court, you can. OK, there's not a single legal system in the world that gives more chances to these criminals than ours do. So anybody whining about the injustice of our criminal justice system are liars. They're lying to you to try to destroy your trust in the court system. No, it doesn't matter who the defendant is, OK, whether it's Gil and Maxwell or some, you know, uh, schmuck off the street, you get multiple appeals. You can do pre-trial uh, pre uh, arguments at trial court, then you can make the arguments during trial, then you, be, you can make post-trial arguments, then you can make appeals court arguments. And you can even try to go to Supreme Court. You'll likely be denied because it depends on the strength of the arguments. If it's pathetic arguments like this, the Supreme Court is not going to sp uh, spend their time. They're just going to deny you. Okay, And they're not going to get she's not going to get a hearing at the Supreme Court. 
The second argument was statute of limitation argument, saying that the prosecutors didn't properly charge her. I told you guys that wouldn't work either. The law, the, the, the Man Act uh, violations and the other laws they charge her with, they're perfectly within the statute of limitations. So th that was a lame argument as well. <clears throat> And then abuse of discretion argument against the judge um, for denying a new trial. That one failed as well. And then the fourth argument was regarding the jury note, whether the judge should have ruled differently during the deliberations. I told you guys that that was the best argument that they had because that could have gone either way. But the Second Circuit Court of Appeals wasn't buying it and uh, they ruled against her. And then the fifth argument was the silliest one which is that there's not even an argument really they were just trying to uh trying to claim that the sentence was procedurally unreasonable as i told you guys in my video which i'm going to show you guys um the prosecutors were asking for 30 to 60 years okay and the judge gave her 20 years so given all, everything involved in this case that was a very reasonable sentencing to claim that um that the the sentencing was not uh was not reasonable is ridiculous okay so they lost on all of the this is not this barely an argument these are the four main arguments that they have been making for a long time especially the npa argument that they lost we hold that epstein's npa did not bar maxwell's prosecution by the southern district of new york as the npa does not bind the prosecutor's office in the a southern district of new york we hold that maxwell's indictment complied with the statute of limitations as 18 u.s code section 3283 extended the time to bring charges of sexual abuse for offenses committed before the date of the statute's enactment we further hold that the district court did not abuse its, abuse its discretion in denying Maxwell's Rule 33 motion for a new trial based on one juror's erroneous answers during voir dire. And we covered that juror extensively. The judge had a hearing on it and determined that the juror did not have any malintent and therefore it did not taint the jury proceedings. Uh, they tried to argue otherwise and they have just been denied. We also hold that the district court's response to a jury note did not result in a constructive uh, amendment of or prejudicial variance from the allegations in the indictment. Lastly, we hold that Maxwell's sentencing is procedurally reasonable. Okay, so that's what the uh, that's what the judges held, and they go on to, of course, break down each of the arguments. I'm not going to go through this because I've literally been doing this for like three years now, and so I'm just going to show you guys a video of me explaining this from last year and also uh, from three years ago when we looked at the NPA argument. So the, I, this is the longest standing uh, case that I covered on my channel. I covered it. I've made over 300 videos altogether just on Maxwell. I've made about 200 plus videos because I covered it from the day she was arrested. I was really interested in this case. And uh, in the beginning, I was covering it in a more sensationalist way, but then I went to just purely covering the law and my views paid the price for that because people like the sensationalism, but that's not me, okay? So I did some stuff that, you know, I still covered the law, but I uh, bought into some of the sensationalism in the beginning, like with these videos, but then I went straight only to covering what's happening in court. But so I have no regrets. I covered it honestly, as I always do. So uh, back last year on July uh, 7th, I explained the appeal and how they're going to lose. And the uh, and uh, and so we're going to look at that. But before that, I want to show you my video from three years ago. This was back in uh, April 17th, 2021. So let's move on to the first section, which had to do with the non-prosecution agreement that Jeffrey Epstein was granted back in 2007. Now, Ghislaine Maxwell was trying to proclaim herself as being included as one of the unnamed named co-conspirators in, inside that uh, inside that package. So she was trying to use that as an excuse. And of course, I've gone through this like 10 times already. That particular non-prosecution agreement only uh, is attached to the geographical jurisdiction of Florida. <laughs> the state of New York is not bound to a non-prosecution agreement that was agreed to by Acosta back in 2007 in Florida. So yes, there is a geographical restriction. And the second thing is um, the, superseding, the first superseding indictment, the crimes that are alleged there go back all the way to 1994 to 1997, while the non-prosecution agreement with JE has to do with crimes that were committed by JE and his co-conspirators from 2001 
to 2007. See the difference there? The NPA does not apply to any other time period as aside from 2001 to 2007. Maxwell, in the first indictment, has been charged with crimes that were committed from 1994 to 1997. So, but for both those reasons, the NPA does not apply to Maxwell. So Maxwell's uh, attorneys are wrong. There are geographical and temporal limitations on that NPA. It applies to Florida from the time period of 2001 to 2007. Our case is in New York, and it applies to the time period, at least in the first indictment, from 1994 to 1997. So for those obvious reasons, the judge has denied her trying to dismiss the case uh, on the grounds of the non-prosecution agreement which in itself was unfair when he was reached back in back in uh back in florida well, let's move on to the next thing the indictment is timely the indictment complies with the statute of limitations federal law imposes a five-year limitations period on most non-capital offenses 18 u.s code section 3282a recognizing the difficulty of promptly prosecuting crimes against children congress has provided a longer limitations period for quote offenses involving the sexual or physical abuse or kidnapping of a minor 18 U.S. Code Section 3283 until 2003, the operative version of Section 3283 allowed prosecution of these offenses until the victim reached the age of 25. Congress further extended the limitations period in the PROTECT Act of 2003 to allow prosecution any time during the life of the victim. So basically what all of that means is that the PROTECT Act of 2003 was a key piece of legislation that allowed for uh, victims of sexual abuse or, uh, or related crimes to basically try to get justice as long as they were alive. So before, as I mentioned, um, it was un until you're 25. The victims could only sue until they were 25. But now, because of the PROTECT Act, which was passed in 2003, which is very late in my opinion, um, it, that extended that to the life of the victim. So as long as the, the, the person who was abused is still alive, they can file charges. And the judge basically ruled this. The court concludes that statute of limitations in the PROTECT Act applies and that the charges are timely. So Maxwell was trying to say that the general statute disqualifies these charges, but the judge says no, under the PROTECT Act, the, 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 the girls are able to um, have their day in court and the prosecution is able to bring these charges against Maxwell. So that was me breaking down two of the arguments. You'll notice that those were two of the arguments that were made by Maxwell's side uh, that the appeals court also denied for the same exact reasons. Uh, they basically agreed with Judge Allison's um, under, uh, breaking down of the law and her conclusions. These are well-established rules and precedents when it comes to these sex trafficking cases and there's clear congressional laws that have been passed to make sure that these victims can get justice and that's what the prosecutor those were the laws that were used by the prosecutors to uh to prosecute Ghislaine Maxwell okay so now now let's take a look at one more video and this was my this was just my um prediction back last year when I when I covered their appeal I explained to you guys why they will lose the justice department was asking for 30 to 60 years and the judge gave you 20 years they should be thankful that the judge went for the lower number and not the higher one okay and like i said if this is held to be valid then her sentence might go from 20 to 15 years but that's the best hope that they have okay and likely that's not going to happen either the appeals courts most likely will reject all of the arguments here and her conviction will stand there's not much else to say gillen maxwell is guilty and she will remain guilty even if she gets a sentence reduction she's still going to be in prison for over a decade and that's all the ultimate bottom line. So that's basically it for Gillian Maxwell. This was her last hope, the appeals court, to try to overturn the conviction. Uh, they can try to go up to the Supreme Court. Uh, it's going to fail. I can tell you right now, there are no interesting legal questions here. There's no new ground to break for the Supreme Court. There's nothing to explore. These are well-settled precedents. The Congress has made its voice heard. They have passed laws. The prosecutors used those laws to prosecute Gillian Maxwell. Everything was done within the statute of limitations. Nothing untoward happened during the trial. Uh, the judge gave 
ample opportunities for them to challenge everything basically every single question that they had asked here they tried to use this at the appeals court at the uh, trial court excuse me and th now they been they've been denied at the appeals courts as well the prosecutors and the judge um who did the judge agree to the prosecutors uh, arguments uh the southern district of new york prosecutors uh who tried this case um they they have been redeemed uh, all the people who supported their side like myself have been redeemed and that's because that's not because we're geniuses this is basic law okay and the gill and maxwell side didn't really have any arguments to make so they had to say something in court to, to, to try to defend their client and that's what they did unfortunately for them it was not successful okay and that's all I got to say for this video. Uh, most likely this will be the last update I'm doing on this. Maybe she'll try to go to the Supreme Court and she will be denied. I can tell you right now. If that happens, I'll be making another video. But for now, uh, Gillian Maxwell is going to be in prison until 2037. I think is her, her scheduled release date right now. Uh, even if she gets parole, she's going to be serving more than a decade in prison. And that's the bottom line for this video. Thank you so much for watching as always. And I'll see you guys in my next one.